Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for this simple um, twist headband. I'm using Bernat Baby Velvet and it is so, so soft. I think I might have found the perfect project for velvet. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, this is really easy. I'm using that half double crochet slip stitch. I have a, that I just recently did a video for, but we're gonna do that again. So start with a chain. I'm starting with 20 chains. All right, I've got my 20 chains, but I thought I better tell you or show you exactly the brand I am using. So Burnout Baby Velvet. I'm using an H, and this is a five millimeter hook, 5.0. This is my Susan Bates Comfort Grip that I like to use. But anyway, so 20 twin chains to start with. We will start right away in that second chain from the hook, yarning over, inserting our hook just under the top loop, yarning over, pulling back through, and pulling through the two loops on the, hook, on the hook. So I've heard this called a yarn over slip stitch, a half double slip stitch, which is what I'm choosing to call it, and I don't think actually I've heard of any, just those two names is what it was. For the longest time, I had no idea what name it was. But it is such a great stitch to use for velvet. When I get to the end of this chain, I will chain one and turn. So keep working on down the row. I'm just working underneath the top loop of the chain from the row below. I know it's really tricky to see with velvet. Um, you have to get used to it, but you kind of keep, you know, use this other hand to feel for the next stitch and then you'll get it. All right, I've worked all the way down and if you want to go back and count, you should have 19 half double slip stitches. All right, I chained one and now I'm turning. And if you can see the little V's that face you, that kind of helps you to now know where to insert your hook. It's much easier on this row. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through, insert your hook. All right, you will just work this stitch back and forth, meaning, you know, go down to the end of the row, chain one and turn, use this stitch. And I work, for, head, for patterns like this, I just like to work to the circumference of the head size I'm making it for. So my head and my daughter's head, most of my girls, we measure 22 inches. I think we're pretty average. So I make this headband about 20 and a half inches. So I will keep working back and forth until it measures about 20 and a half inches. And then we will sew it together. So get a tape measure handy. And because um, you want it to be able to stretch and then fit more snugly around your head. And I've noticed that the velvet tends to stretch out and not exactly go all the way back. So you definitely want it a lot tighter at first because um, it will stretch out. It still has some stretch, but anyway. Okay, so get that head measurement of the per person you're making it for and make it about an inch and a half smaller. All right, I am back. And to give you a, maybe a time on how long it took me to get this much done, I've been working on this for about an hour and a half. So it can be, a, you know, 
made in a day, so that's good. So I have tried to, you know, stretch this around my head and it fit to 22. I think that's actually your best bet. I mean, I did measure this and maybe I was a little bit too generous. Oh, let's see. It's measuring about 19 and a half, almost to 20, but that's like, if I can stretch it out, then it goes 22. So I think your best bet is to, you know, start measuring around your head and maybe go two inches shorter than what the circumference is. Like say you just, you know, you wanted to do these to gifts for gifts. So I'll put that also suggestion inch and a half to two inches shorter. Okay, let's let's sew this together. You will need a tapestry needle is all. And let me grab mine here. Okay. So, of course, I'm finished with this row. And I'm going to leave myself a long tail that I can sew with. Let me also find a pair of scissors. Hold on just a second. All right. I have my scissors. So, I, I clipped off. And I'm going to just pull this through. And we will use this as our sewing end so tapestry needle blunt large eye blunt tip large eye feed it through and what you'll do is simply let me see if i can get my camera adjusted up so you can make sure you see what i want you to do is fold the work in half like this but then I want you to find match up about halfway like this then all you'll need to do is wrap this half back behind and wrap this half in front so it kind of makes a little kind of wrapping it around each other just like that so they're fitting inside of each other half to half. All right, feed this side through so you're on the outside of your work. And all we do is, sorry, there we go, get that through. Keep these lined up and then we will sew all the way through the four layers and just work back and forth through all the four layers. I'm working underneath kind of all of the top loops, making sure I've got all of the layers and just threading. Ah, make sure that one kind of fell down in there. There we go. That one end. This one, this one. Come on. Stay up there. There we go. Back and forth. And then I'm, I, I'm, I suggest that you also turn around and go back down. Make sure it's nice and tight. I want this just as secure as possible. Okay, and then just simply, you know, you can finish this off by tying a knot and then maybe weave it in a few times. Um, make sure it's really secure. And then go find that other end and weave it in too. It must be hiding in here. It must be hiding in my thing. So I will just weave this through. Kind of call it good right there. Okay, now we'll trim that off. And this is the magic part that I love is all you have to do is turn it inside out and you have your little, there's my other end. Let's get these ends woven in. Kind of hiding in there. I'm gonna actually just poke it through to the back. 
I'll, t I'll knot it with that other one. But you get the point. I'll do that off camera. Cut those, knot those, and cut them off. But anyway, here is what you end up with. Just kind of pull it, and you get that nice little twist in there. So simple, simple. Here's my other one, just so you can see, maybe without the ends. So take the time, weave those ends in, and um, okay, I'll, t I'll put this on for you and you can see what it looks like on. Okay, can you see? It's cute, isn't it? And it is so soft and comfy. I love it. I guess you can style it any way that you would like. But anyway, these, I'm making a lot of these and uh, lots of Christmas gifts. Actually, I'm making these for my for my neighbor's um, Christmas boutique. We'll see if we, I like to help her out with, a, have a few things in stock. I normally don't make and sell my things, but anyway. Ah, oh, should have left it on. Okay, thank you everyone for coming by Daisy Farm Crafts. We just are so appreciative of you. And come and join our Daisy Farm Crafter group on Facebook if you need a little bit help with any of our patterns. It's a great group of people that have come together um, offering up their tips and things of, of and working our blankets in all sorts of different colors and you can get other different you know, other ideas. So I will put a link for that in the description, but everything is named after us, daisyfarmcrafts.com. Come and find us. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day.